it is the end of 2023. I asked you guys to send in the most memorable pop culture moments from this year and we're gonna rank them because that's all you do here from time to time. The top one is for the history books, then made me giggle, then live... oh wait. Leave her alone. <laughs> an abomination and the last one is the politics of it all the reason why i have this last tier the politics of it all is specifically for some cases where honestly i have qualms with a lot of people companies etc etc i'm just like pissed at a lot of things in general that's just who i am some of them have gone beyond above and beyond what i could tolerate this year so they're gonna have to go in this category the first one i know jump scare but it's specific specifically about this interview that Rachel Zegler gave on Disney event or whatever. I don't even want to mention the gal on the right, but this interview, specifically Rachel giving that interview or whatever, has been blown out of proportion to an incredible like honestly crazy level and i need you guys to know listen i just recently realized that a lot of people when it comes to big productions like disney productions and whatever they hear one thing and then they fucking run with it and that's what happened with rachel and people just honestly being so fucking hateful for no goddamn reason i genuinely again i have talked about this before in one of the other videos i think it was in the hunger games video where i talked about not knowing anything about rachel because she is a singing girly and i am not really a musical type of person by musical i mean like watching musicals and that's why i did not know shit about her okay and i genuinely was like Mm, maybe she did say something crazy maybe it's amy schumer type of situation where she just keeps on saying crazy shit and her work is just not that good either you know i thought maybe that's the case because why the fuck would people be so hateful so i decided to look into it myself because i was gonna talk about her and tell me why she didn't she didn't even say anything that bad so many people were commenting on my other video and i need to tell you right away okay that genuinely everything that she said was not that big of a deal and second of all i need you to understand that a lot of actors get some points pointers of what they need to hit when they talk to a bunch of interviewers on those carpets at the events or whatever when they stop and they give interviews they have certain things that they have discussed with the director with the producers what kind of angle they're aiming for and with snow white in particular they were trying i'm sure they were trying to go for the whole um subverting the narrative the princess does not need no man whatever whatever a lot of people got pissed at it because people are just tired of this narrative Narrative, which is quite annoying because it's like yeah it's a basic bitch understanding of feminism sure but what are you expecting from a company like disney you were expecting something good from them i think that we should just honestly question them about their writing abilities their greed and other issues that they're involved in rather than talk about this actress who's like she's like early 20s right like 22 23 whatever she's in her 20s in general she's not gonna be responsible for the direction of the fucking movie this is gonna be such a long rant holy shit but i need to say it okay because i'm so tired of this bullshit every single day day in and day out i was seeing rachel zeckler hate and i just don't agree with you last time i said it people were genuinely thinking that i did not see those interviews and that's why i'm saying that she's like not in the wrong i have seen those interviews and what the fuck about it she was actually really nice in all of them yeah she was like a little bit um more 2013 animated in a sense of like her interview style the way that she responds to questions or whatever which is honestly pretty expected from somebody who loved media from that era she probably watched so many josh hutcherson and um jennifer lawrence videos like you know like their interviews or whatever that she picked up some of the mannerisms that are kind of out of fashion right now but they're coming back they're gonna come back in like five years so who gives a fuck like genuinely i do not understand if you think that rachel is mean sure as fuck i'm a lot meaner than she is she hasn't she was like literally talking at the sag and aftra whatever strikes she was literally standing there talking about how like oh if i'm gonna be standing in an iconic costume of this iconic character that i should be paid for all those hours whatever which is it's good that she's using her voice to help everyone 
get fair treatment. But I would honestly not even be saying so many nice things about it, even though like, God, there's so many people who were like, there's so many actresses who would want her place or whatever. And it's like, okay, and what about it? That, 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 does that mean that you're not supposed to comment on the fact that fucking Snow White was like 15 or some shit and the prince was 30 something when he kissed her when she was passed out? Come on now, guys. As much as I understand that we have new takes, more nuanced takes on the princesses, which I am glad about because because it's always good when the popular opinions are kind of taking a step forward. Hopefully we're taking steps forward in terms of nuance, you know, in feminist conversations or whatever. But goddamn, I'm not saying you can't like that story. You can. It's an iconic story. It is. But it is incredibly weird to get mad at an actress she did not decide what kind of direction the entirety of the fucking disney production would go in when she's on the carpet she's supposed to give interviews where she's like well we're going a different direction she's not gonna do this and she's not gonna do that like i don't understand where's the fucking logic you guys just like explain it to me because i clearly do not get it and i saw so many people just being so nasty for no fucking reason it's like you guys just want to be bitch slapped so bad at this point like why do, can't you just keep it to yourself sometimes what, if you're gonna be like well why can't you keep it I, that's my job talking is my job honestly sometimes i wish i didn't have to fucking speak some days i am so fucking tired of talking it's crazy but this is my job you guys were nasty about hallie you guys are nasty about rachel and you're always trying to come up with so many different reasons as to why you're nasty and every time it just comes down to you being either racist or or misogynist or fucking both which is so wonderful and lovely and not at all concerning anyway fuck everybody like <laughs> rachel didn't do shit the girl on the right she did do shit okay that's the one you should be talking about honestly Ugh, anyway wait you know what I'm gonna cut this rant down, but I was ranting for a really long time because I'm just so tired of everyone pouncing on some woman every fucking business day, just choosing at random. There's so many predators in the industry. There's so much nonsense in the world that we should be thinking about and maybe doing something about instead of doing all that. Britney Spears, The Woman in Me, this biography, it is crazy how long it takes for things to sometimes come out and like how intense everything is behind the scenes sometimes there were so many different things in that memoir there some of them were devastating to hear but some of them were really really funny in a sense of like how much of a loser justin timberlake is because it's fucking crazy honestly <laughs> for example him saying for shiz jay got all excited and said so loud oh yeah for shiz for shiz genuine what's up homie after genuine walked away felicia did an impression of jay Oh yeah, for shiz, for shiz, genuine. For shiz. <laughs> not me saying that with my fucking accent. And the reason why it was even sent to me was not because of any of those things. It was specifically about this quote about her first time with JT and her saying that the world collapsed on the... Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> i don't feel like getting demonetized i'm gonna tell you that much but there's a specific reason why it was sent in because it was like a meme on twitter or whatever the fuck and i'm gonna tell you mm, i like don't really care for that but the way that it was written and the fact that she finally has her story out there stream janet jackson discipline the best songs love feedback so much better what's your name and curtains oh you know what leave her alone i was gonna put it in for the history books but honestly i just want her to have peace and it seems like she's got so much to deal with anyway because like with her sons and all of that sag aftra i don't know if that's how you pronounce it but i'm gonna pronounce it that way strike and wga striking too good for them the fact that they won fantastic uh they should be asking you in for more i want those billionaires gone quite literally they are useless and could be replaced with chat GBT. <laughs> all of those CEOs, all of those billionaires, they all suck ass and they need to be eradicated. <laughs> so this is for the history books. <laughs> and if people are like, oh my God, Lisa, don't say that. I mean it. Why would I say it if I did not mean it? I mean it. Lana. 
at the restaurant it made me giggle it was a really good it was a good moment i love that lana is so effortlessly memeable every year we get so many iconic memes that a lot of people who commit wholeheartedly cannot get like there's this um the guy who's like oliver tree or whatever i don't know how many memes he's got about him but he doesn't have nearly as many as lana and lana doesn't really want to be a meme and i'm not saying that th this is like in a disrespectful manner when it's like oh my god she's a clown no like <laughs> it's just kind of so many things about her become iconic and just really hit even though there are some things that she's done that are questionable and whatever the catalog of memes cannot be denied the claim that she has on popular culture cannot be underestimated it's crazy honestly like her music continuously goes viral on tiktok and it's just it doesn't really it's not like it's a good match in terms of genre it's not like she's hyper pop type of artist for example that has a really or, or like kind of like nikki you know with the verses that can go viral viral she's making music that sometimes is a really slow burn type of song and yet all of those songs are becoming iconic or becoming a trend or whatever it's crazy how effortless it is for her she's like um, a gold mine for the people who are her managers or whatever because she doesn't even have to be posting on tiktok to still have a presence on the platform that's so organic it's crazy good for her business oh jyp okay <laughs> This is for my K-pop girlies. <laughs> JYP, first of all, the reactions of people in the audience. This was like an actor thing. <laughs> we always get really iconic moments from that. Like, for example, with Yurin, that girl who was um, singing Dally Dally or whatever it is. <laughs> there was also reactions that were really crazy, but her performance was good. This was crazy. This was genuinely insane. JYP looked at Jackson Wang and was like, I should pull that off too. I should go for that whole new romantics kind of shit. Sweet dreams are made of this. My <laughs> I saw this clip go viral on Twitter with people talking about Itzy recording a song and he was like really mean to them and making them cry because of their performance in the studio. <laughs> My guy, are you sure you should be you you're the one to talk at? Huh? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm made of this. It made me giggle. I genuinely was crying laughing when I saw it for the first time. No offense to him. He seems okay. Or maybe not. I don't know his life. But Sonmi is okay with him. Like she's chill with him and I trust her. Don't quote me on that, bitch. I, I don't know his life. I don't know him. <laughs> obviously it was funny as hell come on now doja cat hating her <laughs> fans someone said i want to hear you say i do love you guys as usual you say to your fans and she said i don't though because i don't even know y'all and someone said and we don't know you but we have supported you through thick and thin you'd be nothing without us you'd be working at grocery store making songs on fucking garage band miss high school dropout um i really don't like doja cat and not for the reasons that people kind of got really pissed at her because i don't know i think that white supremacy might be the reason that you should be pissed about okay i feel like that's the thing that's really fucked about her honestly so i would have put her in the politics of it all and i might but some of the responses that the fans had for her did make me giggle i'm not gonna lie to you because so many things that she said were so ridiculous like for example i saw this clip where she was talking about how people are calling her mother they expect you to serve and she did not mean it as like serve she meant that serve means the same as like servitude and fuck the girls what are you saying on that song? it's just like fuck the g it's more like stan twitter excessiveness behind it all the malice towards women the condescendingness of people being like mother oh my god queen mother and expecting them to like to give and deliver and serve mm. the way that she was addressing it so let me explain it what i understand this situation to be or what she was saying and how off she is the way that she was talking about it was like a addressing the expectations of servitude of women in society and she was trying to kind of point at it and be like the way that they talk to me they expect me to serve they expect me to like whatever they call me mother and when was the last time you saw a man and a straight man at that scream mother at someone in the way that we do 
when we are supporting somebody we like, when we're supporting somebody's performance or their art or whatever. Explain that to me because it's clearly not vernacular of straight boys. And that is the group of people who you would be addressing if you're talking about the power dynamics in which you are in the marginalized group and they are not when it comes to gender. Do you know what I mean? Or when it comes to servitude or whatever. If you're talking about white people, for example, right? It also doesn't work because mother vernacular is not an invention of white people. Once again, I don't understand why she thinks it's somehow some kind of expose of the underbelly of you know stan culture she could have talked about some things that actually do influence her or like for example she could have talked about a portion of her fan base who are you know people who are sexualizing her or whatever it is right but that wouldn't be the same group who are screaming mother at her let's be real this person named heather who's they them is not the one <laughs> who's expecting servitude from you. I don't know if you noticed, but that's not, that's just not how it works. And especially considering her weird ass preference in men and the shirt that she wore and all of that. God, it just all makes me want to vomit. Like, uh, First of all, I'm not a political person at all. Politics are not something that I want to sweep into my life. I just want creativity and joy and the immediate reality of my friends, my family, and my, my music. Can somebody explain that to me? Because I clearly do not understand what's going on and why she doesn't feel genuinely nauseous being around those people and wearing that guy on her shirt. She, she, she genuinely thinks that fans just appear out of nowhere and they do not appear based on who you are. There are some things that could be out of your control. For example, Britney Spears was really, really young when she became a pop star. She did not have control, entirety of control over her image, right? So she could have decided, for example, on an outfit or on a song, or she would have decided some things that could have, for example, potentially bring her success. But a lot of things of hypersexualization of her, even if she would have decided to do it herself, she was a minor, so it does not actually equate consent in terms of her image being super sexualized, right? For Britney, the type of audience that she would be gathering wouldn't be in any shape or form a reflection of who she is as a person. Kind of similar to when you're doing a job that requires you to do something, for example, play a game, a specific game that's popular with a demographic that is not really similar to who you are, but you, for example, don't know that that can happen. You could like Call of Duty or something like that and play the game and garner a following of people who have nothing in common with you just because they were watching you play a game and it wasn't about any of the extra things that you were saying. You know, they did not know you. So maybe that in that regard, you could have gathered a following that you genuinely dislike as people, right? But Doja Cat, you were grown when you started your career. And now she's saying that she did not mean all of that stuff, you know, like not what she said to her fans, but her first albums, that it was just a cash grab or whatever. And it's like, okay, and now what? Your new music is derivative. It's still derivative. Yes, it's popular. It's catchy. I'm going to give you that. Honestly, it is catchy. But what about it? It's the same shit. What did you think you did here? Her whole thing with like demons and whatever, it's so boring. I mean, of course, I understand that my understanding of what is boring is going to be quite different to what a general public would consider boring. Just because I have a degree in visual arts and I saw so much shit on it daily. Just so much nonsense because artists are freaks artists do really weird shit i'm quite used to it i know what would be cutting edge and what would be boring as shit and what she's doing is boring as shit i just cannot respect her as an artist because she's just not bringing anything to the table she's talented but is she doing anything like an artist instead of a performer no, I don't know. It's just fucking weird. The whole entire thing is weird. And I think that people who she's dating, people who she's friends with, her past, her present, and the people she doesn't mind being associated with, all of it is painting a really fucked up image. And I was, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was giggling at the comments of people snapping back at her when she was being, you know, disrespectful to her fans or whatever. And it's like, some people do have shitty audiences. I agree. But those people are usually also a little bit shitty. There's obviously 
outliers in every single fandom or audience but if you are someone like what's her name sniper wolf for example right like you just steal stuff you don't contribute anything you are kind of just a leech on the back of a platform but you are huge and you have a lot of followers or whatever you are going to have a lot of people in your following that are not good people because what you're making what you're putting out there is not going it's not attracting people with brains like generally speaking i don't know that there's like random people who appear on my channel who i genuinely i'm like oh, what the fuck but most people literally 98 percent of anyone who's watching who's the, my audience are chill people and and based on the comments based on like how they interact with me and with others and like i see how people are talking to each other and whatever they're people with brains most like there's there's always some random people who appear on my videos but there's a reason as to why a lot of people who don't align with me just walk away from my channel there's a reason why i like most of my audience is because my stuff that i put out even if it's more silly than what i do on the on the on the regular in terms of an artist if it's just media and entertainment it still has my opinions that will attract people who either agree with them or understand them and like at least in terms of the fundamental beliefs align with me so if you don't like your audience this much, look at yourself in the mirror. I think that that would be the answer as to why this is happening. There are some people that are always going to be weird, like um, even if you are putting out something that is personal, whatever, who are not there for the right reasons, especially if you're a really big star. But Dojo is just saying nonsense at this point honestly again oh my god i need to stop ranting bitch damn okay i'm gonna put it in made me giggle because i do not like her in there and i, and I would have put her in the politics of it all if the comments back to her from the audience wouldn't have been that fucking funny honestly colleen ballinger with her ukulele i have said this before and i'm gonna say it again i have bumped into her when i was like 19 or so in vancouver when she was filming her show and her and her friend gave me the dirtiest looks ever to this day i'm still really happy that she did not like me on sight something about my vibe was just not <laughs> not jiving with her and i'm just so happy about that it does make a lot of sense i mean this video was so stupid it is so insensitive it's so tone deaf pulling out a ukulele to sing and not even an apology but a deflection song is insane genuinely something that you would expect from like snl not some i mean at this point i guess we are expecting this from life but it's just such a bizarre move i not only that but a lot of her behavior her being like my it's something about like my little stabbing me in my bony little back or something like that that was like a line of that sort and my little frame and my sweet little girl voice honestly we're gonna put her in an abomination i would have put her maybe in the history books because it's just so funny but i'm gonna tell you honestly i think that someone gonna do something even crazier and more fucked up in 2024 and we're not gonna even remember this but stop watching her who's watching her why the fuck is she getting views in this day and age explain that to me explain it genuinely honestly if any of you know explain that to me because i genuinely don't understand what the fuck is going on here timothy and kylie jenner timothy timothy whatever the fuck it is i mean i'm catching a bad vibe from timothy i've been catching it since forever and i have said that i've already heard a bunch of things from people who were in university at the same time as he was maybe he was like older by a couple of years or whatever i i never bought into the illusion of this french speaking boy i just keep getting worse and worse vibes from him each and every day the things that he says the snl performances a bunch of other shit we'll see how it goes and uh for them i mean a lot of people were so shocked by it and once again i am not shocked at all his personality is like already out there if you're still thinking that it doesn't make sense that he's with kylie jenner oh i need you to think again honestly come on now that's way too normal the whole situation and i don't really have anywhere to put them here so we're just gonna go 
<laughs> Barbenheimer. If I were a business analyst who would have been making this video specifically about business and whatever, I would be putting this into for the history books because, oh my God, we sold so many tickets in the era when nobody goes to the movies anymore. Oh my God, people are gonna try and recreate it, but it's not gonna work because this was just a little bit more organic, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, honestly. I didn't really care. It was okay. It was fun, I guess. Those movies coming out, I like the memes about them. But genuinely speaking, I'm not gonna remember them in like 10 years. Maybe Barbie, I will. But not Oppenheimer, B bitch, come on. <laughs> not him being so surprised the bomb was used after he created it to be used. Like, come on. I guess made me giggle. Oh, Ariana Grande. Girl, this whole scandal, horrific absolutely horrific not because of it being like so morally bad or whatever well it is you know i don't like anything that happened but um it's not that big of a deal considering the world in general but him i'm saying it with the same tone of the her joke from arrested development okay him all right I mean, but it did make me giggle because he's so SpongeBob if he was a person. And you know it, I know it, we've seen the jokes and they were hilarious. They were correct. They were correct. And the fact that he played him, girl, this is the stupidest shit ever and I love it. I'm not even gonna say anything about this fucking mushroom head and just gonna put him in the politics of it all because fuck him. Josh Hutcherson whistle edit. Tell me why I remember it. Tell me why I remember it, the original. When I saw the picture before I even knew this meme yet, I was like, oh, it was like core memory got triggered. It is for the history books and um, I don't want to hear anything about it. Like it is for the history books. Sorry. This one, girl. Okay, so Taylor is dating this like NFL guy. First of all, I want to say to every man who was talking about how Taylor is using him for fame or something like that, I just need you to understand once again that nobody gives a fuck about American football but Americans. You need to be serious. Okay, maybe Canadians also give a fuck, but you need to be serious. Sit down for one minute and just realize that NFL players are literally nobodies outside of america nobody knows their names nobody knows how to even fucking play that game girl because to us it's american football not football no one participates in it and you guys call it world cup world what world is participating in it the states that's not how world works girl what does it mean taylor is the famous one you need to be serious. Whenever I saw people debate, what what do you mean? Let's have a debate about it. There's no debate. Nobody knows this guy. I can't even remember his fucking name now. And I've seen it so many times recently because of Taylor Swift. And I still can't remember what the fuck his name is. Because that's how irrelevant NFL is to literally everybody else but America. I need men in America to understand. No one knows about this. No one cares about American football. No one cares about how to even play it. Let alone watch it. Let alone have some celebrity athletes or whatever that was just ridiculous and also i'm tired of like videos of people being like oh my god is it like a dream or something or like is it a movie a bunch of pictures of taylor and this guy looking at each other at the games or whatever and i'm like what movie are we talking about what what is this world what kind of what is happening i okay you know what i should have had like a category that's like cultural differences category where it's just lisa generally is not going to be able to understand this i don't know let's put it in between leave her alone and an abomination it's like i don't care if you put the two together and you split it i don't care <laughs> prince harry making a biography as well this one is funny as shit it made me giggle i'm not gonna lie to you girl that was funny as hell i knew that the royal family is like 100 percent a bunch of weirdos but they're also kind of like a little bit stupid and the whole thing is just so funny but also kind of sad because it's like they get a lot of money from the taxpayers and whatnot and they're really fucking embarrassing as people but the part where he got his dick frostbitten in the arctic that was funny i don't know bitch it was it was funny it made me giggle i loved watching un carly's video on it that was really funny i enjoyed the whole experience it was great hunger games renaissance it was a whole thing because before even the movie came out we had a whole renaissance for like a whole year of just people rereading the books people reading books for the first time and like documenting it on tiktok or new videos like new discourse showing up here and there and then we also got this movie and rachel and tom got this characters they portrayed or whatever i enjoyed it 
um, I have said what I think about the creators and their stance on the political issues or whatever. But I'm really glad that this movie has Hunter Schaefer in this role of Tigress. I really think that she just fits that role so well. I don't know, like whenever I was thinking about Tigress as a young woman, I was definitely imagining someone like Hunter. So it was like a very, very just perfect, perfect casting. I think that Rachel is a great choice. The fact that she was singing everything live and that moment in the movie when they see each other for the first time after the games, she just played, she really put her whole Rachel Lucy in that one. Okay. It was really, it was really great, honestly. The way that she can act through singing and while singing and st- like the whole thing was really really good and I am a hater of musicals as I've said so it's really hard for me to enjoy a performance that's shrouded in singing and uh yet I have enjoyed it very much Tom did a really good job love him as a blonde now I got used to him with brown hair and I'm like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense but the first time I saw him I was like that can't be the same fucking person they just it just looks like two people because it just gives such a different vibe but good for him because that's um it's gonna be a lot easier for him to have versatility in terms of um, acting gigs that he actually looks quite different with a different hair color love the curls i'm the curls girl but the bus cut great as well i just think this is a really interesting addition to the world of hunger games because usually i kind of just don't like new additions to things and most of the time they're kind of just like a cash grab or they're just not well intention in a sense of them not expanding the world in any type of way it was a good a good time for the history books because all of us who grew up with it were still gonna be you know still gonna like it taylor and maddie they're gonna go into the politics of it all because i cannot look at this whole situation they're annoying me honestly i have very little patience for celebrities and for rich people nowadays just because they have gotten so out of touch and so they don't understand that there are limits there are limits with what what they can do before people really get fed up you know and i'm just like i have such short temper with them now that i'm not even going to get into it it's just they're going into the politics of it all and if you know you know if you don't you don't good for you oh harry going bald well shaving his head not going bald oh my god sorry sorry harry he did that in vancouver actually i knew that he was in the city because of his girlfriend his girlfriend is from vancouver and um the news were reporting on him being here it's just, that's how i mean he is a huge star so i guess it, it makes sense but still it's always really silly you're like okay so he went to the farmer's market or whatever the fuck okay <laughs> like what what do i care <laughs> he's um shaved his head and people were losing it it's a really big part of his brand and his public persona the way that people were screaming and crying about it really made me giggle honestly it did like i'm not gonna lie to you like it was really (laughs) entertaining and um the last one is kim talking about how courtney or chloe one of the other k's stole her wedding idea or whatever after today her like coming out of starbucks and looking at the paparazzi and specifically taking a picture like they genuinely think people are gonna run to starbucks to buy it because she came out of the store with it the fact that they are overestimating their impact so much she can go in the abomination even though this was ridiculous and funny because of how ridiculous it is i'm also pissed about today's development with this girly and um we need to get rid of them we need real celebrities or not real celebrity honestly fuck it all I'm gonna make my assistant make a video with me soon where it's gonna be like just funny without me going on rants. I promise, I promise. Um, she just makes me a little bit more lighthearted and yes. This has been the 2023 pop culture ranking video. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me moments that I have missed or moments that you would move around. And um, I will see you soon with another video. Bye.